Hey guys, this is a follow-up video to my last video about putting this Big Block 460 into my 74 F100. So there were a couple questions on that last video, plus just a couple things I left off. So I'm going to go over those now. Um, as you can see, it already looks a little cleaner in here. I got some wiring loom for all the wiring. Move my fuel regulator over here. Um, I was able to use the AOD uh, cable that I was using as my kickdown cable for the C6. And I just kind of followed the instructions from low car for the C6 and um, hooked that up. So it's kind of cobbled together, but it works. So pretty happy with that. Um, I had to turn the choke way down because I live in Texas and you hardly need choke, but I got that sorted. So that's good. You can see I still need a belt for my power steering pump, but I'll be doing that probably today. So that should be taken care of. And then I'll make some sort of nice bracket spacer thing for right there. So then one of the biggest questions was about these headers and the cross member under here. So the transmission cross member is pretty much in a stock position. I believe this frame already had, well, I may have boogered it up there with the AOD, but um, there were already some holes drilled in the frame here. And so it bolted up pretty much just fine and um, bolted up to the center of the trans cross member just fine as well. So that was nice. This one right here though was in the way. So on the driver's side header, it's clear as day, no problem. But over here, the header spits out right at this cross member, which I had that problem with my 351, so it was already cut. So um, I didn't have to cut it anymore. I'm hopeful that maybe an exhaust shop can work around it and I could weld in a new piece of metal there but I'm not sure that's gonna happen. So the exhaust is from when I had the 351 in it, so it's super janky right now, but I'm gonna have probably dual exhaust go all the way to the back with actual mufflers, not just glass packs. So that was probably um, one of the biggest interference issues, but with a grinder, it's not the end of the world. It's pretty easy to cut out or even a sawzall. And then the only other big interference issue was on the header right there where the gearbox is. Now on most gearboxes for these dent sides, they don't look like this. They don't have this big square coming out. It is um, much shallower and it's more of like just a semicircle right here. So I don't think these headers would, would have been a problem. I don't think I would have had to bash them in, but I did have to uh, knock on them a little bit to flatten them out. Not great, but not terrible. Um, but again, just know if your gearbox looks like this, then um, you'll probably have to do that. But aside from that, everything seems to be working really well. So I'm pretty happy with it. Then the last thing I did was some work to the transmission. I actually put a low car uh, shift kit in it and one of the things I noticed with that is it shifts fine. Um, it shifts early unless you're really on it. So like driving around town, it shifts really quickly into a second around 10 miles an hour. And then if you're you know, not trying to accelerate that much, it'll get in the third by like 25. So I adjusted the vacuum modulator a little bit, uh, but then I kind of did some research and it turns out that it's kind of what the shift kit's supposed to do. Just going around town, it shifts early, so you're not revving the engine up a ton. But if you if you get into it and um, really have your foot on the gas, it will hold off the shift much longer. So um, I think I'm pretty happy with that. The sh transmission shifts nice and smoothly, and um, the kit went in really easily. So I'm actually going to include some clips from me putting that kit in. Hey guys, you may know that I just rebuilt this 460, had it on the dyno, 
and now I am working on the C6 transmission that's going to go behind it. Today we're going to crack it open, clean it out as much as possible. We're not doing a whole rebuild on it. We're just putting a shift kit in and a new filter. So um, yeah, here we go. First thoughts after getting the pan off. Um, it's got some crud on it. But actually, like the inside of this thing looks pretty good. I think that may have been just from having the uh, the dipstick tube out, but I'm not sure. This, well, some clutch material, but that's not bad. It might not be great, but we're gonna run it anyways. I'm gonna throw it in there, and then worst case scenario, I can always drop it and have it rebuilt, but. Honestly, that is all looking pretty good so far. So I got the valve body off. I did find one of the screws was uh, stripped for the filter. Not ideal. Might go ahead and put a helicoil in that, but I'm not sure yet. But inside here is looking pretty good. Like I said, there was a little bit of crap right here, but um, I think that just got into it while this was, this was sitting, so. Everything else still looks really nice. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and start trying to clean all this up, get as much of the old fluid out as possible. And then um, I guess we'll jump into the valve body. All right, so I've been using this Transgo kit right here. Great instructions. Um, everything's come apart and went back together really well. I tried to lube everything up as good as possible. Um, the last thing I have to do is drill out one of these holes and then I'm going to start putting the valve body back together. So before I go ahead and put the valve body in, I adjusted the main band. That's simple enough to do. You got to put your transmission in neutral and then you hand tighten this adjustment until you can't um, spin the input sh or the output shaft backwards. So you Tighten this in so you can't spin this backwards while well, the transmission's in neutral. And then you start loosening this so you can just start turning this by hand. Then you go a whole nother quarter turn looser and then you snug down the lock nut. And this should be good to go. So it's got just a touch of play. I assume that's so that when everything heats up, it doesn't grab on all the time. And now we'll put this valve body back in. So when you put the valve body on, you have to make sure that the parking lever is engaged in the correct shaft and that you have uh, park, reverse, neutral, drive, two and one. Sorry, I kind of skipped those. And then you also need to make sure that your kick down linkage is in the right spot. There's a stud that sticks down that will keep it from falling all the way down this way. So you have to line that up and then it should have some springiness on the valve that it uh, rests on. And there you go. All right, and then before we put this pan back on, right there you can see that's what the filter intake looks like. And you can see it made a mark on this pan. So, what ends up happening is if you jack up the transmission with a jack and you put it right in the middle of the pan, it'll bend the pan up and then close off the filter intake and then you're basically killing your transmission. So I gave that a couple dimples right there. It's not anywhere close to coming through or anything. So um, that will just help prevent in the future um, the transmission getting starved of fluid because the pan's dimpled up. And then, yeah, I mean, this thing's basically drivable now. There are a ton of other things I have to do to it, but um, pretty happy with how smoothly everything went, all things considered.